Hey, what's up guys? Cookie here, and today we're going to count down the seven villains in Star Wars Battlefront 2 from worst to best. My rankings are based on their effectiveness in Galactic Assault and Heroes vs. Villains, as well as just how enjoyable the characters are to use. So this isn't just about what villains can get the highest streaks, it also has to do with just how well constructed the villains are and how effective they are in the game. So without further ado, let's get into who the best villains are. At number 7, it's Aiden Versio. Going into the game, I was skeptical how enjoyable this character would be, and my skepticism proved to be well placed. Let's start with the positives. Aiden's TL-50 is actually very effective and fun to use, and her secondary fire effect is also a nice touch and can be very damaging to enemy players. Unfortunately for Miss Versio, that's as far as the positives go. Her health is extremely low, making it hard to even use the TL-50 and secondary fire on groups because she will take too much damage in the process. Her powers are also very weak. The Pulse Cannon is a very bad power-up considering how long it takes to charge up and how ineffective it is in a battle situation. Her stun droid is completely useless because by the time the droid moves to stun something, Aiden's probably already been killed. The droid shield could be nice if it worked properly. In the campaign, Aiden dropped the shield as soon as she began to fire, which always gave her the jump on enemies, but for some reason in multiplayer, it simply doesn't work right. A patch on that shield could drastically improve Aiden on this list. Next up at number 6, it's Emperor Palpatine. The Emperor can be a very fun character to play with because his powers are pretty cool, and his fast dodging ability paired with his high jumping can make him a very difficult target to hit. He also has some pretty cool powers like Electrocute and Chain Lightning, which are both extremely deadly on large groups and fun to use. He also employs his Dark Aura, which not only does a good job of damaging the enemies around him, but also looks pretty freaking cool. So why is the Emperor so low on this list? Well, considering that Palpatine can't block, it's surprising that his health is so low. This makes him a very easy target for infantry, making the only means of defending himself his quick dodging ability, which is cool and all, but doesn't really work as well since he has no lightsaber, which is another criticism of the character. The lack of a lightsaber is also disappointing considering his lack of a saber in the first battlefront was a point of contention. I'm surprised they didn't employ that this time around, plus, his hands just look messed up. Just throwing that out there. And number five, it's Bosk. Bosk was famous in the first battlefront for one thing, being broken. His health ability in this battlefront makes much more sense. Instead of gaining health every time he deals out damage, he can now simply return himself to full health when he gets clear of enemies, which is a really nice touch that still employs his Trandoshan healing power without making him overpowered. However, his powers are a little underwhelming. His proximity mines can be very useful if he's in a sniping position, but like most mines in Battlefront, it usually doesn't actually come in handy. His Dioxys Grenade is also very underwhelming and doesn't compare at all to his Toxic Escape from Battlefront 1. His Predator Instincts is still pretty cool now that he shoots grenades instead of his regular gun. This power is very deadly in Galactic Assault because when used accurately, it's a one-hit kill on enemies. Bosk is also practically useless in Heroes vs. Villains, as none of his powers make him all that useful in the game mode. His gun is supposed to be a long-range sniper gun, but it's very inaccurate and a little hard to use. I don't think they missed the mark by much with Bosk. A slight buff in some areas should make him a much more enjoyable character as the game progresses. Coming in at number 4, it's Kylo Ren. Kylo was one of the most talked about villains that was coming to this game because of many different elements about his character. His movements, look, and voice all emulate the character perfectly, although his lines could use a tune-up. He embodies the character well. Kylo does have very cool powers like pull and freeze. These two elements are extremely fun to use and make the character unique. His frenzy is not nearly useful enough, so some slight improvements to that would be nice moving forward. So on the fun scale, Kylo ranks quite high. The problem with Kylo is his effectiveness. His health and ineffective saber block make him very susceptible to being caught off guard. He has no escape ability like Darth Maul, and he can only block a few shots before he starts getting shot up. His ineffective block also hurts him in Heroes vs. Villains, because in any saber battle he will almost definitely lose. I don't see why his block is so short, so I think a little tune up there, and you have a very fun and effective character. Darth Vader comes in at number 3. Vader is the only hero that I will say that could use more nerfs than buffs. His health wouldn't be a bad idea on its own, 
but since he can drastically increase that through star cards, it should get a solid nerf. Vader should be a tank character, but having that sort of health can make him a bit broken. There's been a lot of criticism about Vader's focused rage because Vader looks awkward in these movements. I don't necessarily agree with this though, because it's the only quick attack that Vader has, so it gives him some options in that regard. Vader's block is very good, which is right since he is a slow character. His force choke is very fun to use, although I would argue it leaves him very susceptible, but the increased health does sort of mute that fact. His lightsaber throw is very powerful and can go through multiple targets with one throw, and then the highest positive I can give is just how true to the character the interpretation is. For one, his voice is much improved from the first Battlefront. His breathing sounds truly menacing, even in his dying breath noise he acquires when he's low on health. They did a very good job in the design of this character and making him true to the classic Darth Vader from the films. In second place, we have Boba Fett. Boba is probably the best villain when it comes to just being good. Boba is very hard to shoot because of his jetpack, and if you are good at controlling his jetpack, you will absolutely dominate your enemies. He is very good in Heroes vs. Villains as well, since most heroes can't shoot him at all when he is airborne. His rocket barrage is extremely useful and fun to use, as well as a major improvement from Battlefront 1 Boba. His radar pulse is extremely effective, and his concussion rocket, although not as useful, still can be effective if used at the right time to stun enemies. So why isn't Boba number one, you ask? Well, he's probably a bit too strong, especially in Heroes vs. Villains. His jetpack ability makes him way too hard to kill. So what should DICE do about that? I don't know. You can't take away the jetpack, nor do I think they should even nerf that ability, but there's got to be some way to give him a slight nerf without rendering the character completely useless. DICE proceed with caution on this one. And at number one, it's Darth Maul. Maul is number one because he encompasses exactly what a Fitland should be. Extremely fun to use without being broken. Darth Maul's abilities are very fun to use, like Furious Throw and Spin Attack, and of course, Choke Hold. However, he isn't overpowered since he is unable to Saber Block, but unlike other heroes who can't Saber Block, Darth Maul still is able to run away without getting massacred thanks to his Quick Dash and Spin Attack ability, making him super useful in the right hands. Darth Maul is exactly what each hero should be, the perfect balance of fun and effective, not to mention his voice and character design is also flawless. Dice, make Darth Maul your example for every hero and villain in the game, and we should be just fine. So what do you guys think? Did I get it right? Am I way off base? Do you think I'm an absolute moron? Well then hit those comments below and let us know. We know you guys have all sorts of opinions and we'd love to hear it. Who's your favorite villain? Tell me what I got right, tell me what I got wrong, and we can talk about it later. Now do me a favor and smash that like button if you liked what you saw. Subscribe if you haven't. Donate if you can. And we will see you in the next video. See you guys later. I warn you not to underestimate my powers. Do not throw away your potential. Don't force me to kill you!